Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave, episode 79. So, I pulled out an old treasure that I've been holding on to for a while. Um, it's a Pong machine. And I remember buying this thing. I found it in like an antique store. It was like, it was just sitting in the display window. I was literally walking down the street and uh, I saw it in the window and I'm like, what is that? I got to see what that is. And I ran into the store and I looked at it and I'm like, this is like some kind of Pong device. And this is going back, I mean, way back when uh, retro games were kind of still, they were still, you know, nobody was really collecting them. I mean, they, we, we didn't even call them retro games back then. We were, they were just games. And, uh, you know, Nintendo was already out. Super Nintendo was out. Nintendo, I think even maybe the 64 was out. I don't know. But um, I just remember seeing this thing in the, the store window and I'm like, I, I got to check that thing out. And they, they were, I don't know what I paid for it. Um, and, and that's this, this thing. Uh, it's called the Bentley CompuVision. Whoa. And I recognized it as being obviously a video game system because it had like controllers and, and wire here and, and all the, the, the buttons. But I didn't know what it was. Like, I didn't know. And when I was inspecting it, I'm like, obviously it doesn't take cartridges. So whatever this thing did, it clearly is, uh, you know, it's got all the games built in. And the thing that struck me as, as cool factor on this guy is that wood grain and the black, you know, this has some dust on it. i got to dust it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it looks like an Atari. It looks like an Atari, uh, an original Atari 2600, the, the VCS. And so, obviously, this is a product of that day, uh, even to some degree the Intellivision. And the controllers, you know. Now, you notice the controllers are just like a, a stick. Like, there's no buttons. There's nothing to it. So I was obviously thinking this is obviously some type of Pong device. And uh, I like how, they, how they, everything just kind of fits into a neat little package. It's got all the little buttons there. All, everything does what it has to do. And it's got its, uh, or, you know, it's, ooh, it's long cable here. This obviously is your, uh, the cable for the RF switch. The old style switches. And uh, so, yeah, I bought it. I, I don't know what I paid for it. Probably like 10 bucks or something. I don't know. Didn't pay a lot. And the first thing that struck me odd about this thing is it takes batteries. And so when I pulled this out of my storage area and I was looking at it, I'm like, you know, this would be a cool thing to look at. I realized, I'm like, okay, first of all, I'm missing a battery compartment or the whatever, the, you know, the little door thing that fits over it. And, uh, and then I need some batteries. <laughs> to try and get it to work. And so I got myself uh, you know, a couple of Duracells and I started putting it in there and I was trying to test it. And at the last second I just noticed that it had uh, this. <laughs> it takes um, a, what do you want to call this, a power pack, battery pack, or a, whatever you call these things, a power bar switch thingy. And so I went back and I looked, I was like, oh, I had this with it. So obviously I must have used this when I first got it or something, or uh, maybe I figured it out a long time ago and I've forgotten. This one does like a whole bunch of things. It has like a bunch of different switches, so it fits a bunch of different systems and things and devices. It even has this 9 volty thing where you can connect a 9 volt to amp up the power. Pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it says in here the input uh, 9 volt DC, yada, yada. I don't know point is it worked <laughs> I plugged it in right in the back there I think it's the same power that an Atari takes I'm pretty sure just like that and then I was able to plug it in um, so now the next thing is to see if it works to see if I could plug this sucker into the TV and get a game out of it so I'm gonna do that let's see what happens no oh, look at that it works. That's amazing. All right, now I just need to figure out. Oh, okay. Okay, so that controller does that. I guess it depends on what game I'm running on here. Let's see. There's practice, soccer, tennis, squash. Hmm. Then there's ball angle, steep, player size. Okay, well. Hmm. I guess I'm in, uh, what am I in? Soccer here? Let's see what this is. Practice. Squash. Let's see what squash is. Man, reset. 
Um. Huh. Weird. Pretty cool. That's a square bouncing around the screen. Nice little square. Okay. Let's check out, um, hmm. soccer. Uh, that's not soccer. This is soccer. So that's soccer. Okay. Now, unfortunately, this is, you know, Pong, so it's not really designed for one player. Although I do think there might be maybe squash. Squash is designed maybe. Well, this squash I could play one player. Um, not doing too well at it. <laughs> uh, actually, these controls are quite well. I mean, they it's quite fluid. I'm, I'm actually surprised. Is it me or is my ball going through the paddle? Huh. But yeah, I mean, this this is moving quite well for something of this age and... Uh, oh, okay, so... Why are you going through there? Okay. Let's try something else. Let's see what te tennis is all about. I just love, love how the game, like, just automatically starts. Oh, there we go. I'm, I'm literally playing Pong by myself. This is pathetic. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I wouldn't expect something of this, you know, magnitude to have a, an AI player. You know, I don't think it was designed this way. I wonder what these ball angles do. Oh, huh. okay. So I could change the ball angle and it starts, it doesn't seem to be going as uh, crazy as it was. Hmm. There's also a uh, ball speed. Oh yeah, look at that. But for whatever reason, the ball seems to be going through the paddle. Perhaps there's a defect in my system. See, went right through. Hmm. So I'm turning it off and on again. See what happens now. Yeah. There we go. Hey, hey, that ball. Oh. There we go. Definitely much easier on the slow. I'm trying to do this with uh, one hand here. There we go. Woo. Now we're ponging. Uh, oh, come on. Right, no. Pong, pong. There we go. Hey. I've, I've never done this before. I tried to play pong with one hand. <laughs> This is single player pong. I mean, overall, I mean this this system is still working like the day it was created, which is pretty cool. I have no idea how this would look if I were to hook this up to a like big screen, high definition TV. If it would even render it properly, who knows what it would look like? It'd probably look like a mess. I'm I'm quite surprised about this. Frankly, uh, I was not expecting it to even work. <laughs> I mean, my uh, VIC-20 that I have, the Commodore VIC-20, doesn't work. And, uh, you know, it was just sitting. I didn't really uh, do much with it. It just apparently died on its own. Well, this is fun. I don't have to do anything. Beep. Nice little blippy sounds. So many options, so many options. But yeah, this is Pong. This is cool. I like this. Alright, so you just saw that actually this is like a Pong system. That's pretty much what it is. It's Pong. And um, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's got this practice mode, soccer, squash, tennis, you know, all these little options here. You can change the angle to make it harder and uh, the ball speed, which I... You know, I changed that in the middle there to make the ball go a little bit slower. You know, because uh, maybe you might not want to be playing such a thing, you know, hard. Player size. I don't know what that did. I didn't actually click that button. There's a player size. I guess that maybe changes the paddle size. Um, a few things I was uh, surprised about was the fluency of the, of the controllers. It, and, uh, you know, I guess I'm surprised because these, they don't look like much. Like the wire on this thing, it's like so thin. 
it looks like it's really light it looks kind of you know it looks like something that would break easily um but i mean turning it like the uh like these guys like the uh, atari paddle controllers i felt that this was really really good i mean i would like to try using this on an atari unfortunately these things are wired in there like it's almost like the intellivision where it just sits in there and it's completely wired into the system just like it's rf cable thing it's it's wired in everything's wired in so it's a nice little package. I mean, that's about as far as you go, right? But for whatever reason, the power switch, I guess, was sold separately. <laughs> they wanted you to use batteries for some reason. I don't know why you would use batteries on your console. Um, now, I believe this thing, I saw on the back there. I'm just going to flip it over. Yeah, there, there it is. I thought, I, okay, Bentley, made in Taiwan. Uh, okay, yeah, I thought I saw there might have been a date or something, but I think when I when I heard about this system a while ago, this system actually came out in the early 80s, like, you know, well, I think it came out in 83, and um, kind of weird, maybe even later than that, maybe later, uh, it came out when there was a lot of better systems out there, so it's a little bit strange that this thing hit the market, and, uh, you know, maybe it's just... Uh, one of those things where they thought they could pass it off as a cheap entertainment system. You can hook it up to your TV. You can play Pong all day long. But, you know, it's cool. I mean, I, just on the cool factor alone, this thing looks neat. I like the look of it. I like the wood grain. I think anything with wood grain looks nice. It's one of the things that the, the modern consoles of, the, of today are just lacking. Like, they all look like the same type of units. They're all oversized. They're all, you know, full of these hard drives and everything like that. They just don't have the nice wood grain finish that the old consoles had. And uh, that's a good question if, uh, is, you know, we're, we're hearing about the Atari creating a new system. Is it going to have wood grain? Because that will be a sale point. Definitely be a sale point. Anyways, yeah, this was kind of fun. I like pulling this out and playing it. Uh, it was kind of neat. I think I, I next time I need an opponent because playing Pong by yourself is not fun. But anyways, yeah, hope you liked the video. Let me know what you think about the Bentley CompuVision. If you have anything like this, if you've ever played a Pong system, do you even like Pong? Or maybe Pong is just past its prime. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, talk to you later.